Kaboom! All right, so if you didn't check out part one of this, uh, check it out. It came out uh, just a few hours ago, uh, but go check it out. We, we talk about why we think and why we agree with a recent video that came out about the how getting into debt has, has kind of ruined a lot of people with sports cards and how we think, why we think the sports card collapse is, is really just on the fringe of happening. Um, but you had a question about the national and we're going to talk about that and really what we think is going to happen in the sports card world the next six months. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The national is going to be a liquidation event, as I mentioned on part one, and it's going to be unlike anything. I think there's gonna be a lot of people coming ready to sell, right? They're ready to either sell to buy other stuff or just sell to recoup some of their investment into the hobby. And they think it's just going to be this, I think you said it earlier, kumbaya session of everybody just handing out hundred dollar bills to buy all these sports cards from people in their Pelican cases that they're walking around with. Uh, you know, I tell you, uh, here's how I'm thinking about the national right now, two weeks to go till we'll be sitting in Chicago. You and me is uh, I'm like, it's shark week right now too. So I'm, I'm like a shark. I smell blood in I the water blood. and I am ready to go on a frenzy. I am bringing cash to the national and Three months ago, I'd have, I would have told you I was nervous being able to find deals. And I wonder if anything will be priced to where I can even feel comfortable buying it. Now I am that shark in the frenzy chomping at the bit to get there. In fact, I, two weeks is good because that'll allow things to kind of start cratering even more, continue to crater. And I'm excited about what I'll be able to pick up at the national. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. No, that's, that's that's a great point. And I think, I think why I'm really interested to see what happens at the national this year is because i think we've had all kinds of conversations we just were coming off you know a great weekend of, of hobby palooza i was able to talk to you know plenty of people we we're talking about tech platforms and just the progression of the hobby there's a general excitement because we're coming off a year of just explosion and then now we have two months of kind of decompressing but for those that are going there to to sell I think you're going to be in for a rude awakening because the buyers that are coming in, you're going to have some investors, like granted, you're going to have that at every show. Yeah. Well, the smart money knows that pop reports are continuing to increase. Uh, you're, you're having, you know, you have basically sellers who are in a tough position right now. And guys like you know, you can offer 20, 30, 40, 50% off the asking price because if you, if, you don't want to buy now. You can wait two months and you're going to get it. So for those that are going in and thinking you're going to just going to get top dollar for stuff, like you are in for a rude awakening. I think it's a total mass liquidation event. First couple of days show and frighten people realizing, oh shoot, like we're not getting the prices we thought. We got to go lower and be more aggressive. And you got mass competition across the the convention. And I think uh, I think this this propels us even lower. Um, over the, the rest of the year, I think the I, national sets the tone for how agree. how this becomes basically a sell off in the card hobby. Who does that do? You, or let me rephrase the question: Do you think that that favors collectors like myself that have PC minds? Like I, I don't care. I want to buy it as cheap as I can. It's going to go into my. I'm not trying to resell it. Does that That's favor people like that? That's a great point. I th and I think it does obviously, but I think what people tend to forget is that guys like you that go and buy, you're not supporting the investing mindset. You're, you're not, that card's not going back in the marketplace a month later. It, it's, it's right. being, you're buying it and it's being put into your collection and more than likely it's never sold again. And that that's great. You want those buyers, but that doesn't fuel the fire that folks expect in the hobby. And that is really needed to support the crazy supply we have now. So yeah, it's great for you, right? It's, it's awesome for you, but it's not awesome for the marketplace that people are relying on. But is that fair? We said it, you and I have had private conversations. 
I totally agree. I, I think you and I have had so many conversations offline and even on videos. We knew this was an unsustainable trajectory that the hobby was on. Not only price wise, but again, supply demand, how much stuff is getting graded and being put out on the market. And mostly that's the modern, ultra modern type of stuff, right? Bas whether it's baseball, basketball, football, you name it across kind of the three major sports. Um, it was unsustainable to begin with, which means this shouldn't surprise anyone that this is where we are and where we're heading. And it's what saddens me about it is I think it will drive. It's not going to affect me. I'm in the hobby for life and have been for 40 years. It, I'm not going anywhere. What saddens me about it is all these guys that maybe came in a year or two years ago, they're going to be in some type of financial stress. Yep. I, I, I hate to use the word ruined. I hate to see anybody financially ruined from the hobby. That would be tragic. But if you're under some financial stress because of the decisions you made, then they will likely, certainly possibly leave the hobby forever. You're like, well, that's a no win situation that they never, but they never did it from the right place. And so again, I'm not surprised by any of it. They came into it with dollar signs in their eyes and greed in their hearts and they didn't. And it doesn't mean that you can't go into it with that mindset and grow to love the hobby. Watching uh, the guy do his regret video, whatever, about how getting into debt almost ruined him. He, it's not that he doesn't like the hobby, but he it's, I don't think it's the deep penetrating love that you need of this hobby to endure periods like this, like the junk wax era, like the early nineties, all of that was periods that I went through in the hobby and came out on the other side, just like, okay, welcome to the hobby. They didn't know better. We've said this too many times. These people didn't know any better. They've only known hobby great, hobby awesome, hobby growth. They've never seen these periods. They're about to get <laughs> a nice slap in the face with it or kick in the nuts, depending on how you look at it, with what's going to happen over the yeah. next six months. And I'd love to hear what you think the next six months look like. Yeah. And, 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 so for those that didn't watch the first video, we're referencing a video by Bishop and you can see the, the link in the show notes. A great video. Go watch it. Um, a lot of people don't have crypto to fall back on. He had a good crypto invest investment that allowed him to pay off his credit card mistakes that he made in the sports car world. A lot of people don't have that. And if you're sitting on $4,000, $5,000 in debt that you have to repay and you got declining values in cards, the only thing you can do is, is sell those off or go find a way to make more money somewhere else to pay it off. So like even to Bishop's point, like he, he was lucky to a certain extent that he had another way to pay off his debt and compounding debt right now in this environment is not what anything wants. And uh, that's why we've been so adamant about being smart with your money. But your question, I, I think, so we've seen 30 to 40% drops on average across every sport um, modern, every era. Even in vintage, yeah. yep. every era we've seen it. Uh, I, I think you and I agree that another 50 to 70% and overall 90% pullback in the next six months is very realistic. That, that that's fully what I expect. I totally agree. The, the, the adage I'll use is the harder you stretch the, the rubber band, the harder it snaps back. And we've seen a very quick and significant stretching of the rubber band in cards. I, I could see 90% down from peak happening across maybe not every card for certain, for sure, not every card, of course. In every era. But I think you're going to see in some areas easily 90% values or 10% of, val of peak values, 90% drop. And, yeah, it, yeah. It's back to where we were, right? Two, three years ago, 10 years ago, it, it wasn't close your eyes, throw a dart in a dartboard, and like you're successful. It was you go pick a player and you you walk, walk him through the system and you hope that he hits big. And like if you did, if you invested in them and you collected them and it paid off, it paid off. But most of the time it didn't pay off. <laughs> and, and the cost of entry back then was cheap too, right? Yeah. You weren't paying big prices for a to get a bunch of cards of a never gonna make it guy. Like you do, like you did the last year, let's say, 
you're paying all these huge prices to to invest in a player, right? Trey Young, Luka Doncic. I'm, I'm using basketball a lot, but Luis right. Robert or and look at uh, Acuna, right? You put all your money in Acuna and he tears his ACL. You're like, uh, that's not good. Now Acuna will be fine. If again, if you're long term and you're just you own a couple of Acuna rookies and this and that as part of your collection because you love the Braves or you love the player, fine. Don't care. You shouldn't care about him other than you'd just love to see your favorite player playing and not have a torn ACL. But you're not worried about paying your mortgage because he tore his ACL. Right? That's the that's the fear I have with the hobby and the direction it's been going and Again, now what we're going to see. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and Tyson put out a rookie report uh, that by the time you're watching this will be on uh, on the site. So check it out. The link I'll put in the show notes too. And, and he breaks down like these top guys going into the baseball season and how even guys that were no doubters, right? The Mookie Betts of the world, the Ron Lacunas, the Sotos are just, a, they're a part of that utter collapse in prices. And it's just, it's sucking everybody in with it right now. But obviously to our point, like there will be guys that are, that are not going to see like the, the 90% pullbacks. There'll be guys that survive. I still think wax will be maybe a better way to spend money. Uh oh, kids coming in. That's all right. Well, I'll talk for a second. You know, you're mentioning all these players at the hype of the, like who came into the season, really the only player that's seen any type of rise in pro well two probably Vlad Guerrero jr. Probably. You could say, and Shohei Otani. Well, sadly, it took a Herc like Ruthian effort, no joke, like not even a pun, Ruthian effort by Shohei Otani to get to see his prices actually go up that were already depressed because of his injury riddled career to this point and not meeting expectations. Well, he finally meets expectations. His cards finally go up and start getting more in line with Acuna and Soto. It's kind of the same rookie class, but, uh, it took him doing what he's doing. Had he had a bad season, they'd be plummeting just like everything else. And Vlad Guerrero Jr. is having the same thing. He's having a great season. Uh, so his prices are going up. Certainly probably not at the same rate. They would Imagine what those cards would be doing if we were in a market a year ago. And how much oh, for sure. the prices go up, right? For sure. And, and you're right. It is a Ruthian effort. And... Otani was actually one of those guys who got hurt last year and didn't see a massive increase because he was right. hurt. Right. So it's kind of like it was the perfect storm for a guy like Otani to survive this pullback. And there'll there'll be those exceptions, of course. But but I, my point would be those exceptions are very, very rare. Yeah. Very rare. You got to get super lucky if you know you're gonna have one out of 50 hit, be correct. That's not a good batting average. And so that's been true of prospecting for decades, not just recently, for decades. If you can invest in all these, pro you could buy every draft pick in the that just happened in the draft. You could buy all their rookie cards. You may get lucky on one of them being really good. And even then, it might even only be for a short period of time. Right? It's that's, yeah. but that's the gambling mentality. People love that. I think yeah. it's, personally idiotic but nobody listens to me anyway so <laughs> uh yeah no it, it, it'll be good to shift back to the whole hey build a collection but do it profitably mindset like that's the mindset i've always had it's different than investing it's how can i maintain a, a collection without you know breaking the bank but right, right. I, I will be interested to see if this pullback and it's going to come helps the or, the hobby shift back to traditional parts of the hobby like set collecting again you know and 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 opening wax with your kids again like all the things that we've forgotten in the last 18 months that were really what made the hobby what it is will this fuel kind of us like heading back to what we really love about the hobby i think it will i, I do too i think there's a renaissance coming uh I, we can talk nostalgia of two years ago or three. It's so sad that you can go, man, I would just wish it was like it was three years ago in the hobby. Um, it, it's going to be your, cause you're, you're, it's coming, it's here, it's happening. You can use whatever, you know, adjective you want to use to describe 
what we're about to see, but be, I can't wait for the national. I can't wait to see the environment. I can't wait to talk to dealers. I can't wait to find wonderful deals for cards that I want to add into the, my forever PC. Uh, it's going to be a great time no matter what. Yeah. Well, one more thought on this and, uh, and then we can wrap up. I I'm very, I'm more bearish than I was six months ago about the evolution of card platforms in the hobby. And I'm curious to know your thoughts on this because as we see like every week, there's a new card platform out there that helps you check out analytics or organizer collection or, or buy online. I don't know if the hobby's big enough to support a lot of this. And I think people are going to be surprised with how many of these sites and platforms aren't around a year from now. <laughs> and look, I'm a tech guy, man. I love tech. It drives efficiency, optimization. I love it. I think I there's a big swing and miss. Huge. And there's a lot of money being poured into that by outside investors and things buying up these platforms and trying to take advantage and capitalize on the boom that might already have passed us by point being you remember an analogy i'll use is do you remember the tech bubble 99 2000 in in the stock market right you could literally throw a dart and make 30 percent on your stocks because they were all doing well everything everybody was all euphoric and super excited about things and what that did is made everybody a genius and they were, they were all stock experts now and man, and there was a lot of tech that came in to help people manage their money and invest properly. And then, Oh, let's see what happened there. Right. If you weren't around in the stock market, then it was not fun to be around. Uh, I was in the, I was in the business of helping people invest money at that time and still am. And it's, uh, you know, it was tough to live through and only the strong will survive this. I promise the me the weak will not, the fleeting will not. Um, I want to find something and share it with you. Cause this will tell you all you need to know about what is going on in the hobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well, no, this will be this, good. This triggered me the other day and I, I was actually putting together a separate video on this and I, and I will do a separate video on this, but there was a, an announcement I saw it come across on uh, one of the news sites about um, Cardbase getting an investments from from Peter Thiel. You know, obviously a a major seed investor. And I'm thinking, right? Like who who's using all these platforms? Because all the people that really want them are pr like a good percentage of them are upside down right now. <laughs> like, why would they be motivated right. to go spend 20 or 30 bucks a month when they're upside down in the hobby that's continuing to go down? And I was very surprised to see like smart money like that going into platforms right now. Not me. You, you'd you think they'd be smarter. Well, and, and um, look, we could be proved right. wrong, right? This is just us and our gut. And I don't know. We've had a pretty good There's track. There's a lot of experience last here year. too. Right. Yeah, There's sure. some experience here that's talking. Uh, what I want to show you is this. I'm going to share it with you. You can put it up on the screen. So this is something we talk about with this. It could be true of any market, right? This happens to be talking about stocks. But if you look at where we were in 2019 over here with optimism and excitement and the thrill and look at the little quote out here. Wow, I feel great about this investment. <laughs> That's, and that's Bishop a, right there. Right. And you get to a period of euphoria, which was, you know, January, February, March of 2021. Then what happens? You're at the maximum. It says right here, point of maximum financial risk. And then you start feeling anxiety and then you deny, oh, this is just temporary. This is just, you know, no big deal. And what I think we're in right now in this roller coaster of market emotions is we're in between both fear and desperation. I think we're going to get here pretty quick. You know, the the roller coaster is accelerating down the hill. And this all happens pretty fast to go through these different points on the spectrum. By the time we're at the national, a lot of this fear and desperation will be setting in. You might see some panic selling. And then we get to a point of capitulation. And look what this little quote is. 
maybe the markets aren't just right, aren't, aren't, or just aren't for me. And I, th- I think there's going to be a lot of people out there in the hobby that go, you know what? Maybe this just isn't my thing. Sports cards, right? Then they get despondent. And that's the point. This is the uh, good old Warren Buffett coming in when there's blood in the streets, the maxim- point of maximum financial opportunity. And then, oh, guess what? The cycle starts all over again. And there we are. Um, Sorry, I took that down. You, should, you probably still wanted to see it. But does that make sense? Like, that's what, do you not think that's exactly what's going on in the hobby right now? Oh, I, I 100% agree. I think it's a great illustration. I, and I think we're somewhere between denial and fear right now. And okay. I think the national accelerates us into the next level. That That's why I think the, the national is going to be an eye-opening event. Because it moves us into that desperation, panic category. And, over the, and, and I think through the rest of the year, we see it like just decelerating into panic to capitulation and to total mayhem. Yeah. All state, all state guys should be doing a commercial for us. Total well, mayhem. What it, I just tell people, you know, I would tell people, what do I, so what do I do? Right. Well, it depends on which side of the fence you're on. If you're the investor side, uh, maybe get your money while you can get anything. Um, if you're on the collector side, continue to look for deals, continue to be patient. Your, your time's coming. So, yeah. And, and that's, that's the beautiful thing about markets, right? They're, they're cyclical. And so like there's ups and downs and all this, I, obviously in a, in a world like this, you can't go short cards like you could a stock, you know, and, and bet on the downside, but th- it ebbs and flows and you start to get the hope out of depression. You get hope, you get relief, you get optimism, and you start to see another bubble or market move upwards and who knows how that looks and when it is right in the sports car world we it seems like it's very spread out in the sports car world but uh but yeah, yeah we're, there, there's no doubt we're in the middle of that right now um and you know I, I was talking to some some car shop owners and then also just some some friends that i know that are that are big buyers and have supplier relationships in the distributor world and you're starting to see a lot of of shops and breakers fold up shop and allocations are being a little bit more generous now. All of a sudden, products you didn't think you could get, dealers can get again. Uh, I heard, this is crazy. I heard this a couple of weeks ago from a, from a distributor. One, one of the highest, out of all sports, ordered product this year was Space Jam carts. Oh my gosh. It, it outsold like Prism Basketball and Prism Football. Like that, that to me was like, okay. That's an, that's an awful sign that people are right. flooding into outlets like that because they're like, hopefully that'll stick. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. The old granny, if your granny's, if you see Ed McMahon touting something, that's when you need to get out of it, of any market. And we're seeing that in the sports card world. Uh, there's so many people that are going to be watching this that have no idea who Ed McMahon is. That's depressing. But uh all right, man, I need to go, but, uh, Hey, was that good or what? Hopefully everybody learned something. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple parts we split up. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, obviously leave your comments below, go check out Bishop's video, go like it, support him. Cause I think it's a, it's a very honest video that was helpful for the hobby. Uh, I hope we see more totally. of that. Um, but good stuff, man. Thanks for jumping on. We will see more of it. We, we will see more of it. It's <laughs> will people be willing to put, bear their heart and soul on a video on YouTube about it. We'll see. Hopefully we see some videos like, hey, thanks, Bench Clear. You saved me X amount of dollars because I didn't make this dumb decision. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're trying. Honestly, that's the we are trying. We don't want people to take. No, we don't want we people don't. To the is good of a place. We don't want to see people leave it yeah. for the wrong reasons. Totally. Cool, brother. All right, man. Have a good day. Thanks for having me on. See you. See ya. See ya.